Tim. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a god, it's time for the only news that matters. And former KISS guitarist Ace Frehley has reflected upon the infamous 1978 TV movie KISS Meets the Phantom of the Park, noting he was loaded on drugs and alcohol while it was filmed. And uh, Phantom of the Park holds a unique place in KISS Laurel. Uh, made on a budget of $3 million, the TV film was torn apart by critics and fans when it first aired. Yes, in the decades since, it was it has developed a passionate cult following, thanks to largely to its cheesiness. A said, "I never really had a negative feeling about the film. I thought it was funny. I laughed at some of the scenes. I cringed at some of the scenes, but I was intelligent and smart enough to realize that it was what it was." It was just a silly rock and roll movie that was designed for KISS fans. And uh, though Fraley speaks fondly about Phantom of the Park, some of his memories are muddy due to his serious substance abuse while the film was being made. He said, I was loaded through half of the movie, so I didn't even know what was going on half the time. But luckily, I had a cue cards and yeah, I was pretty good at hiding it. And uh, didn't drink too much when I knew I had an important scene. It wasn't just alcohol that Fairley was under the influence of. Uh, he said one of the guys on the set was a cocaine dealer. I'm not going to mention any names, but he used to keep cocaine in his hat and came to my trailer. So if I had drank too much uh, back in those days, I'd do a little cocaine. I'm not going to lie because I've been sober 17 years. We're only as sick as our secrets. So back in those days, yeah, I did do a little coke if I drank too much. Which would give me a little pick up, pick me up, and then I'd be ready for the scene. Frehley also pointed out that another of his bandmates, drummer Peter Chris, was in a similar state. Says, I got to be honest with you, Peter at the time was as loaded as me, if not more. Decades later, the guitarist keeps a sense of humor when he looks back on Phantom of the Park. A little perspective he maintained when thinking about the entire career with Kiss. He said, how serious can you take Kiss? I never took Kiss seriously. The whole roller coaster ride of Kiss to me was just like this jolly crazy ride and when I was wearing makeup and dressed up like a superhero and playing guitar and having fun and meeting beautiful women along the way, I just never took the thing that seriously. Even though we were on a, one of the biggest groups in the world, I still look back on it today and go, wow, that was weird. Now, I just did a new story a week or two ago about Paul talking about Phantom of the Park. So excuse me if I repeat myself because I have, you know, these opinions on this movie and I may have talked about it then. Not sure, but I absolutely love this movie, but I did hate it the first time I watched it at my friend's house when they premiered it in October of 1978. I believe it was October 28th. And I went to my friend's house and I sat in the living room with him. Now in his bedroom, he had a TV and he had a rinky dink little cassette player that he recorded the movie in the bedroom while we were in the living room. So we had Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park on audio for years. I mean, we were fanatical about this movie and I remember it vividly. Seeing it at his house, my dad picking me up. I was a huge Kiss fan at the time, still am. And while he was driving me home, in my mind, I was thinking, man, that movie wasn't good. You know, I'm supposed to like it, but I guess I never had that sheep mentality. I have to like it. No, you know, 
I thought it was going to be great. Oh my God, Kiss got a movie coming out. I can't wait to see this. You know, I was my, my bedroom walls had a lot of Kiss posters on it, especially Ace, you know? And yeah, and just to talk about a little bit about Ace and Phantom of the Park, it really ticked me off when I saw that. When I bought that Kiss, Kiss, Kissology, was it called? Or Kistry, whatever it is, that, uh, that brought the um, European version, which I hate. I hate that, that version with the whole songs being played. I like that funky, cheap-ass 70s funk music. I thought it just added to the cheesiness much better than, you know, some of those crappy solo songs that some of the members did is in the movie, but... And they cut Ace out of it a lot. They took a lot of his dialogue out. Like, you know, the Beethoven Fifth, that's not on there. It's it's such a rip-off, man. The Good Times home video version, that ruled. I still have the VHS, and I have it burned onto DVD. That, to me, is the de definitive, you know, meets the fan of the park, but... The thing is that I did not see Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park till like 1985 after it premiered. And I hated it for like all those years. I was like, oh, that movie sucked. Then they gave it one night on CBS on a late showing. And I remember that day. It was in 1985. I had to go to a wedding. So I set my VCR timer on it. And I recorded it, commercials and all. And when I watched it in 1985, I thought, my God, this movie is so bad, it's awesome. It's one of those, God, I love it now. I love it. It's horrible, but that's part of what I love about it. It's just awesome. And yeah, Peter Chris was loaded and they used somebody else's voice to talk, you know. That's not Peter's voice in the movie. It was... Uh, Pretty crazy, man. And I think Ace is the only one that really liked it because I've heard Peter Chris bash it. I've heard Paul Stanley of Kiff bash it. I read Gene Simmons bash it. They're ashamed of it, and Ace is like, I love it. You know, he's so happy go lucky. I'm telling you, Ace rules, man. I all right, I am an Ace sheep. I'll admit it. Though I will not admit to liking second sighting or anomaly so i'm not that much of a sheep and i'll admit that ace is very very hit and miss live uh the past like 10 years or so it's like some shows were really bad and the last one i saw with alice cooper was really really good so you know sometimes he's off sometimes he's on but i gotta say i saw a recent clip of ace Frehley that really upset me because I have never had the honor to see the great song Speeding Back to My Baby live. Never. I was never fortunate enough to see Ace Frehley have that song in the set list. Well, it's in the set list now and I saw the footage and it really upset me because it wasn't Ace singing it. What the hell's up with that? I mean, come on. Yeah, I can understand, though I don't approve of Ace playing those Kiss songs like Detroit Rock City and Love Gun. I wish he would take that off the the set list and play stuff like Shot Full of Rock or Insane. Stuff from his solo career, you know? Space Invader, Mission to Mars. I would take Speeding Back to My Baby off the set list if Ace is not going to sing it for basically any other solo song he's done. I think it's a, it's a tragedy to have Ace not sing that song. Even though he probably can't sing it as good as he did in 78, it still should be sung by him. I thought that was so lame. Leave it off the set list if you ain't going to sing it. I don't want to see that, you know? It's like, you know, I don't know, going to see Cheap Trick live. And not see Robin Zander do Downed. Wait, that's not happening actually now. Robin Zander's son sings Down, And it's really good. But 
Robin Zander sings the rest of the set. And it's always awesome to see Robin Zander because he still has his voice. He's a miracle. Anyway, going back to uh, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Fun, stupid, cheesy movie. And always remember, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer aren't even the original imposters. So, thank you so much for looking at the only news that matters. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Ring the little notification bell. Leave your comments below about Kiss Meets the Phantom, Ace Fraley, what have you. Do all that and it will really much help with the YouTube agnorisms. So stay Bloody. frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Well, and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs>